In a previous episode, we talked about a device that uses hydrogen to produce electricity, which is a fuel cell. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at the opposite, a device that produces hydrogen using electricity. So the hydrogen gas that we are after consists of hydrogen molecules. And each one of those hydrogen molecules consists of two hydrogen atoms. So in order to make hydrogen gas, we need some kind of source of hydrogen atoms. Now it turns out that many, many chemicals contain hydrogen atoms, and therefore you can make hydrogen using many, many different chemical reactions. But one very, very common substance that contains hydrogen atoms is actually water because of course a water molecule, H2O, consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So essentially all that we need to do is take a water molecule, rip off its hydrogen atoms and use those hydrogen atoms to build a hydrogen molecule. Except then we're left with that one oxygen atom and that's not gonna work. So instead what we need to do is take two H2O molecules, two water molecules, take their hydrogen atoms, use them to make two hydrogen molecules, and then finally use the remaining oxygen to make one oxygen gas molecule. And if we then write down that reaction, it looks like this. So we start with two H2O, and at the end we have two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. So it's a reaction that produces hydrogen for us, and at the same time, it also produces oxygen. But then of course, the question is, how do you actually make this happen? Well, you can do this using a process called electrolysis, and the device that you use to do it is called an electrolyzer. Now I could just explain how an electrolyzer works using some drawings and diagrams like I did last time with the fuel cell, but actually, an electrolyzer is much easier to build than a fuel cell, so I've actually decided to build a miniature electrolyzer so that I can actually demonstrate uh, what it does and how it works. So let's take a look. So an electrolyzer is actually a remarkably simple device, or at least my electrolyzer is a remarkably simple device, because of course there are more complicated designs out there that you can build to increase production and all that, but this one is not really made for maximum efficiency or maximum production. This one is just made to kind of explain uh, what's going on. So as you can see, it consists of a plastic container that is filled with normal tap water in this case. Uh, and then on both sides, there is a piece of aluminium foil submerged in that water. And to this foil, I have connected some wires. So we've got a black wire connected to this side and a red wire connected to this side. And as you might have guessed, that means this is the negative side of the electrolyzer and this is the positive side of the electrolyzer. And over here, I've got a battery, uh, which is a uh, 22 volt battery. Now, it doesn't really matter that it's 22 volts for this, but let's just connect this device to the battery uh, and have a look at what's going on. So we connect the red wire to the positive side of the battery, and the black wire to the negative side of the battery. And this isn't a particularly high power electrolyzer, so it's, it's gonna be quite slow, uh, but what's going to happen now is you're gonna see very small bubbles appear on these sheets of aluminum foil. Uh, so on this side, those bubbles are hydrogen gas. So the hydrogen gas gets formed on the negative side of the electrolyzer. And on this side, those bubbles are going to be oxygen gas. So the oxygen is formed on the positive side of the electrolyzer. And I'll get some close up shots of that so you can actually see properly that these bubbles are being formed. But why exactly is that happening? What exactly is going on inside this water that is making that happen? Well, let's start with the positive side. So the positive side of this battery is attracting electrons because electrons, well, electrons are negative particles, so they get attracted by something positive, in this case, the positive side of a battery. So this positive wire is sucking electrons out of this aluminum foil and therefore out of the water. 
Now these electrons actually get stolen from water molecules, more specifically from the hydrogen atoms that are inside these water molecules. And what that does is it disconnects those hydrogen atoms from those oxygen atoms. But at the same time, those hydrogen atoms are no longer full hydrogen atoms because they've just lost their electrons, right? Those electrons have been stolen by that battery that is sucking up the electrons. So those hydrogen atoms are now hydrogen ions, or H+. The oxygen atoms that are left behind combine to form O2, so oxygen gas, and those are the bubbles that get formed on the positive side of this electrolyzer. And now let's take a look at this negative side over here. So on the negative side, the opposite is happening. So the battery is pushing electrons into the device. So it's not sucking them up like on the positive side, but it's putting electrons into the water on this side. And that's exactly what the H plus ions need. They want their electrons back to be normal hydrogen atoms again. And so on this side, what's happening is the H plus ions combine with the electrons that are being pushed into the device to form hydrogen molecules. And those hydrogen molecules, well, that's the hydrogen gas that gets formed on the negative side. So on the positive side, we have a reaction that produces oxygen gas and loses electrons to the battery. And on the negative side, we have a reaction that takes electrons from the battery and produces hydrogen gas. And if you then take those two reactions and you add them up to each other, then what you'll find is that we get to the reaction that we talked about in the beginning of this video, which is the net reaction that's going on inside this container. Now, as you might have noticed, there is actually more hydrogen bubbles than that there are oxygen bubbles. And that can be explained by looking at that reaction because of course we produce twice as many hydrogen molecules as we produce oxygen molecules, which is why we have more bubbles on the hydrogen side than on the oxygen side. Now, of course, this electrolyzer is producing hydrogen and oxygen, but we have no way of actually capturing it. So in an actual electrolyzer, it's built in such a way that we can then take this hydrogen away and store it in a tank. And the same thing goes uh, for the oxygen. Now, one last thing that I would like to talk about is energy, because what's actually happening here, we are producing fuel, right? Hydrogen is fuel and that fuel contains energy. So what does that energy come from? Well, it comes in this case from this battery over here. If we connected some other power source to it, the energy would come from that power source. So right now, the energy that is stored in this battery is being put into the hydrogen that we are making. So effectively producing hydrogen is very much like a battery. You take electrical energy, you put it into the electrolyzer, and then it gets stored in the form of chemical energy in the hydrogen that you're making. Anyway, now you know how electrolysis works and how to make hydrogen. I guess if you're interested, then you can build this setup at home and have a go at it yourself. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And of course, thank you for watching.